Hello everyone, and I'm Sophie. I'm currently at Kachara Forest Retreat, Pentong, Malaysia. And today I'll be sharing the third part of the fourth Noble Truth. Previously, I've shared on the first and second of the Noble Truth, and the first being the acknowledgement that our very being in samsara is suffering. For example, having having to constantly meet the expectations of others, like having wealth is successful, having good grades in school is successful, to be married with children, to carry on the family name is successful, as, and etc. But all these successes never have brought any real happiness, but instead create suffering of constantly having to fulfill or maintain these successes. Also, whatever we may achieve will come to an end eventually, depending on our karma and in the end, we will die, leaving everything physically behind. The second of the noble truth is knowing the causes of our sufferings. And in knowing the causes, we are able to overcome them with the application of Buddha's teachings. As Buddhists, we take responsibility in knowing that we are the creator of our sufferings due to our ignorance and our self-serving cravings. It is in creating cravings for our need or want or even maintaining them that creates the sufferings for ourselves and others. So in understanding that it is our selfishness in always acting in accordance to the I, or the me, or the mind factors that we stress ourselves out unnecessarily. The suffering is actually a um, feeling of this dissatisfaction, um, not having to find the satisfaction of fulfilling that emptiness that we always feel constantly in ourselves. And we think that um, an external matter, you know, will be able to fill that void. So today, I will be sharing on the third of the fourth noble, Four Noble Truths, which is the cessation of sufferings. One thing that we all know is that every happy moment or feeling that we have are very short-lived. The moment that we feel elated or jubilant, the moment that we you know, feel that, that happiness, you know, and then the next it will pass and no matter you know how hard we try to recreate that moment of happiness it will never be the same and it is also not possible to create the same so oftentimes we we are just in that, you know, we are mired in um, stress of living and suffer from black moods or disappointments. The thing is, in knowing that the moment of happiness can only be fleeting, the same is actually applicable to the moments of unhappiness or, uh, you know, any disappointment. It's also a very short moment. It's, it will just, you know, a matter of time that it will go away. So everything is temporary and anything, you know, that um, negative emotions or the events that you that is negative will pass sooner or later. And, you know, suffering is basically the sense, as I said, this is dissatisfaction our constant grasping at being trying to be satisfied and living in samsara as we know everything is impermanent and ever changing the condi the conditions you know that we are in is always constantly changing and as such you know we are never able to find satisfaction permanently some will actually live in the past, you know, trying to recreate that moment that they were happy. But, you know, as, as we know, 
it can never be created, recreated because the conditions for everything at that moment has passed. So no matter how much you relieve it, it, it is just a past memory. And some will try to live, I mean, will, most actually will live in the future because we're always working towards having a better future that we think or, you know, our, our seniors, you know, like our parents, our teachers, you know, and all those who, are, who have lived be before us would like um, instill in our mind that how it should be. So in, as such, we grow up, you know, trying to live those conditions and we live for the future, which means we work towards having um, the successes that, that they set, you know, the conditions. And, and as, even though we, we have an aim, but as, you, as uh, mentioned before, samsara is always impermanent and the condition always changes. And even if we were to reach that goal, it is, you know, how sure are we that it, is actually, it will actually bring the satisfaction that we are looking for or the success that we're looking for, the happiness that we're looking for. And, and also, once we reach it, how permanent will it be? It's never permanent because of the changing condi conditions. So as such, um, it's, you know, it is that, that constant emptiness. Some, some of us anyway will feel that, you know, there's an emptiness um, that's within and um, that we would always, you know, think, what is there? You know, what, what more is there to life than what we're doing now? And, you know, some will say that there's a hole in the heart that um, many will think that a good partner or a wife, you know, would uh, be able to feel someone is, is says that um, your second half, you know, that once you find them, then uh, you'll be able to fill that hole. But it never does, does it? Because everything is, um, I mean, your ideals is, it, it's not, it's different because every time, you know, even if you're dating, you know, you think that you're so suitable for each other. But once you get married, the conditions changes and, you know, somehow the children will come along and then the worry will start and, you know, you have to work harder to, you know, uh, earn the living for the family and then to put them through the education and everything. So all the conditions that you thought were ideal will change. So, uh, you know, that kind of um, satisfaction is actually different from what, you know, we imagine. And, you know, as such, um, we, we, if we understand that, you know, we'll be able to let go and to live for the moment, you know, then we will stop holding on to bad thoughts, negative feelings or anger or jealousy or whatever bad feelings we are suffering from. So looking back, you know, you can actually examine how many of the bad moments that you have gone through and are they over? You know, they're actually very fleeting when you actually look back and examine. It's only momentary that uh, you feel uh, you, you will suffer that, that bad feeling or the disappointments and dissatisfaction. So uh, we just need to understand the impermanence. And um, it's really one of the good reasons that... Um, when we are able to let go and not hold on to all this attachment that are that are not permanent, then we are able to feel more grateful for what we have and to live for this moment and to enjoy, you know, what you have now with um, the people around you or your material things that you have now. And instead of um, trying to preserve them and hold on to them, so you just enjoy it fully now. And um, it is also a, one of the reasons, you know, why Buddhists, they, 
meditate on death. You know, so that um, you meditate on the different ways that you know that we will we can die. Because why? Because the end of it is once you're dead, nothing. You know, there is nothing anymore. So that is why we are able to let go of our attachment. And so, as such, when we are faced with unhappy situations, always remember that it is not permanent and it's only temporary. And that um, once we are able to let go of that, we we'll learn to be at peace with our own mind and we are able to bring harmony to those that's close to us. And also, we'll understand that materialism is not happiness. And the status, whatever that we may have, will be lost at death. So with that, I will end my sharing today. And thank you very much for sharing your time with me. So I'll do a dedication in Tibetan. จังจูเซนจูเรนโบเชมาเกปานังเกยูชิเกปานังปาเมปายังกอนเนกอนดูเปวาชูตอนนี้ตัวเรนโบเชมาเกปานังเกยูชิเกปานังปาเมปายังก